Hey there, everybody. Welcome to day three of the It's Coming Up Roses workshop. I was having a few little technical difficulties today, and I'm trying to stay over here away from my phone because I'm still hearing a little bit of an echo. So tell me when you pop on if you can hear that echo at all. Like, do you, it's, I've canceled everything out but I still hear it over here. So I would love to know, I see some of you popping on because you were, you're probably waiting because I'm about five minutes late. Um, if you hear some of the echo. Oh, good, Cindy, thank you. Oh, hey there, Renee. I would love to not be able to hear the echo. So I'm glad that you cannot. But I have to tell you before we get started, I was kind of like hurrying around to get everything set up. It does take, hey, I see a lot of you. Oh, good. I see a lot of people saying they don't hear the echo, Sylvia. Oh, good, good, good. I'll just, I'll just deal with it. So, oh, good. I see Lori popping on. It's going to, it's going to, and Jana popping on. It's going to pop through before I catch everybody. So I see Colette. There's Sylvia. Hey, Renee said that she found me. Oh, good. Very good. So it's four o'clock here in Ohio. And about 2.15, my youngest son calls, said, hey, would you like to have lunch? And of course, I said yes, because I don't get to see him very often, right? Tell me if you have adult kids that you would love to be able to see more often. Both of my boys right now live within about an hour of me. So I don't see him very often. And I saw my oldest one yesterday. We went to the art museum. So that was super fun. And today my younger one calls. And so I didn't even hesitate. I'm like, yes, yes, I, I can meet you. But I have to be back here like by 3.30. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be perfectly honest with you right now and tell you that I don't have everything set up the way that I normally would. I don't have I don't even think I picked a name yet for the winner of the three, the second day of the challenge. I have, I have the envelopes here. I have some prizes to do. So we'll do that during the live. Um, oh, Colette says it does echo the louder I speak. I tried so many different things. Let me, let me try one more thing. Okay, is that any of that? That was not better. I did the very same thing that I just did the other day. Okay, now it sounds a little bit better. I don't hear quite as much echoing now. <laughs> Linda, I know it was really, really bad. So. Oh, oh, good. I can't see who this is that's saying this. I will try to talk very low, but still so you can hear me. But, um, oh, I'm so glad that you were able to, to find it. So, oh, and yes, if you get to see your kids in person, like even for an hour. So we were able to go and we had, oh, I'm so sorry I woke up the cat. It, it's still kind of echoing over here. Normally, if you come and watch my Monday videos, I keep it pretty basic. I keep it just me and the screen and just kind of pointed down on, and I don't have a lot of this, but I just, I wanted to try to have the second screen so you can see more what I'm doing and be able to talk to you a little bit more. So I could try to do... I'm not going to, I'm not going to mess with the sound. <laughs> so, hey there, Jamie. Yes. Yeah, so I do not have everything set up normally the way that I would, but today is all about finishing your artwork. So tell me in the comments, I have a little banner here for you. Tell me in the comments, how many, how many of the days of the workshop have you watched? Did you watch day one? Day one was all about 
doing some pretty painted papers, some background papers. I did some pink and some green, whatever kind of background. There were so many people that posted their backgrounds and they were all so unique, all so different. I even saw one person yesterday, Robin, did some stencils. So tell me if you're over in Art Journaling 101 and you saw Robin did some stencils. I saw some people do some stamping. I saw some people use all kinds of different tools to do their background pages. I saw some collage pages. I saw just all kinds of different ones. And then day two, day two on Thursday was all about creating a focal point. And we took some roses from the tracer sheets that I provided for you. And we created some focal points. Tell me if you saw day two. Day two, I didn't have any of the echoing issues. <laughs> I don't know why it's different from one day to the next. And then we talked a lot about how to create a focal point, why you want to create a focal point. I gave away each day three envelopes of happy mail that I'll be sending out. I also gave away a gift card on day two from the day one challenge of posting into the group. And now here we are on, and I saw all kinds of people entering into the focal point one. So what I'm gonna do is in Art Journaling 101, after this video is over, I will go pull up all of the people who posted for day two, and I will pick a winner, and I will post it inside the group. I'll also post it out here who the winner is too, out on if you're watching from Creations of Studio 39. You may also be watching in Art Journaling 101, because that is where um, all of the challenges are happening, where you're posting the photos, and also where you are commenting on other people's photos. And that's been really fun to see because there's so much encouragement going on. Um, while I am taking a drink, and let me let me try one other thing on my phone. I may have had the sound. I had the sound up on my phone, not through StreamYard. And that's why I was getting the echo. So now I think we're good. Now I think we're good. Um, tell me if you have been in Art Journaling 101 and you've been commenting on other people's photos that they've been posting. Jana says that she did not get the tracer. The tracer was supposed to be in the guide, this guide here, but it wasn't on the last page. So that tracer is inside of Art Journaling 101. It should be in Featured. I did see where there was somebody, maybe that was you, Jana, that said that you just drew them on your own, which is awesome. And... Um, if you wanted to use the tracer, draw them on your own, whichever one. So, oh, I'm not sure who this Facebook user is, but in our journaling 101 and commenting as much as you can. So I don't know that I got to everyone in there, but it's been so much fun to be able to see all the different versions and see people commenting. So tell me, because I'm curious, if you've posted your photos from day one and day two, which one was easier to post? Was it easier to post the day one where it was the background pages or was it easier for you to post day two, which might not be completely finished, but it was more of a finished kind of page. Which one was easier? One or two. You can just put one or two in the comments and I'm going to take another drink. Renee says day one, day one. I see a lot. Marion says day one. Colette, day one. Heather says definitely day one was easier. 
I think increasingly as you get to a final piece of artwork, and I didn't necessarily, this one's all about finishing touches, elaborating, um, doing the, uh, just all the extras that you can do to finish. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about how you know when something is finished. But I, Colette says it took longer to do day two. And I think that that's pretty key there too, because the more time you put in, the more ownership you have of it, right? The more you've invested into it. And there's, it's a higher vulnerability level when you post it. And part of the reason why I wanted you to go in there and encourage and comment on other people's is because I think sometimes we need that encouraging. When we're first starting to do artwork and to post it and to share it with other people, even though it's in a private group, there's 3,400 people in that group. So it's, it's more vulnerable to be able to post as you're finishing a piece of artwork for fear of criticism, right? You fear people making fun of you. You fear people saying that it's not enough or, you know, things like that. And there's just a, a higher vulnerability, vulnerability, higher level of being vulnerable. <laughs> there we go. When you're, you're posting like that. And I wanted people to be able to be encouraged by other people seeing their artwork and noticing what kinds of techniques you use, what kind of, I was asking those questions when I would see the background pages, like, what did you use for that? How did you get that look? What colors of paint did you use? Because I don't have any paint that looks like that. You know, I was curious about what they look like. For day two, it's harder because you're starting to get into more of the decisions that you have to make as an artist. And while there are certain elements we talked about on day two, and there are principles, which we're going to talk a little bit more about today, there's still no right or wrong. There, there's no critiquing. What you create is what you create. I talked about on the video that what you create matters and it's your creation. There's no right or wrong. However, there are different principles and elements that you can follow that will make your artwork more interesting for the viewer. We talked about, you know, having somebody view your artwork is what, what you're really trying to, you're trying to hold their interest. So You know, Jana, I think that that's probably true. There aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of um, negative comments and things in any kind of. You're right. You're right. Like in art groups and things like that. There's no like critical um, people. It seems like in there. So, oh, Christine, have fun. I had a paint a paint your pet party last night. That's hard to say with all the peas. So, oh no, go have fun. I am going to keep this one fairly short today. And I would just tell you that right now because it is beautiful here. When we went to lunch earlier, I met up with my son um, and my mom and uh, my husband went with me and we sat outside and it's just beautiful. So I'm going to keep this one fairly short and just show you some things about the principles of finishing a piece of artwork. And then on Monday, on Monday at 1030 a.m. Eastern, when I normally do my every week live, I am going to be announcing another winner. So you have to stick around until the end for today. And I'll explain to you how you can get on, on being the winner for that. And I'll tell you what the prize is for that. I am still going to give away three of the Happy Mail envelopes today. And I did grab my post-it notes to put on there. And I... Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the post-it notes so that I remember. And I'm going to go right now and I'm just going to scroll up very randomly. And I'm just going to pick someone who has commented, somebody who's commented on the video up to this point. So let me put my little sticky notes on here. And then I have my four pieces of artwork and I'm going to 
let you choose one of them that I'm going to finish today. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of scroll. And the first person that I saw was Jana. Jana, you're going to win the first one here. I don't think that you've won yet on any of the days, have you? Did you win on day one or two? I don't think that you had. I have my envelopes over there. I uh, had the paint party last night, so I did not get out the Oh, good. She said that she hasn't won yet. So I'm going to... I'm going to let you choose which one of the artworks I finished today. So in your guide, if you did not get the guide, this is, yeah, tell congratulations to Jana. If you did not get your guide, this was emailed. So if you're on my email list, look down in the PS. It's down in the PS. This has a lot of information about different materials, different media, um, some benefits about keeping an art journal, all kinds of different things in here, some information about me, um, some things. And it also had a supply list for each day. So on day three, I just put on here glue stick, some scissors, Sharpie, or Posca pens. And I'm going to show you some other things that I finish with too. So I have my four pieces of artwork. Oh, that guide, there's also a link inside of Art Journaling 101 that should be in featured. So, okay. I have my rows on all four of these. So this one is the very first one that I did that I showed on day two that I had finished like after the day one video was over. So this is number one. I'm going to have you vote on which one you want me to finish and I'm going to show you some different techniques. So this is number one. And then this one is the one that I did on day two that showed the um, technique with the card that was a lot of fun. I think a lot of you tried this technique with the um, credit card scraping the paint and kind of carving away the negative area of the rose and that one was a lot of fun. I really like that one. So this one is number two. And then this one was the one that I did on day two where I called it more of the positive um, effect there. And you can, you can be letting me know in the comments which one of these, but this one's number three. And this has mainly this, this dark green background. And I started putting some of the blue around in there because we talked about the focal point. We talked about different ways that you can use color and contrast and variety and just different sizes, like all these different things about how you can create a focal point. And so I use some of this dark blue in here. So this one is number three. And then I'm not even sure that I showed this one or not. I think that I showed a few seconds of this one. This one's on a square piece of paper. I have a smaller little journal that is square like this. And I used the writing in the background. If you remember from day one, we did some intentional writing on the background. I had already had these squiggles in there and like the little spirally things. And then I painted the green over top by using the plastic um, little Dollar Tree cutting board. And then I used one of the tracer roses in here. And I used that same technique on the Dollar Tree board. So there were all kinds of ones in the day one and day two of different techniques that don't have to be the roses. They can be any kind of subject. If you weren't doing roses, what's another, what's another um, focal point? What, what's another thing, another picture? Um, you know, I kind of think of these as like nouns, basically. Like what other noun, like what other thing would you use as a focal point? Flowers, definitely. So if you wanted to do a different flower, what kind of flower could you use? You could use all of the same techniques that I did on these couple of pages, and you could use a sunflower. You could use a tulip. 
You could use, you know, a different kind of flower. I see um, birds. There are so many different kinds of birds and so many ways that you can do birds and all kinds of ways that you can be very creative. Sylvia says a person because she's just going to go all out and, and do like a very complex um, advanced version. Words. We're going to talk about words a little bit today, Tracy. Oh, sunlight. I like that. Oh, a carnation. That would be so much fun. Yeah, faces you can definitely use. I see all kinds of great ideas. I've used a kite before. I've used a, um, oh, Linda says trees. I've definitely used trees before. You can use, um, I've even used my hand as a focal point. Um, leaves, organic things, um, you know, buildings. They, <laughs> Sylvie says not necessarily complex. That's true. That's true. Sharon says daisies. I like that. Flowers are definitely, over the summer, I think of all kinds of um, ocean related things, right? Like beach related things. They, um, I just, there's so many different things. So just because I'm showing you these techniques with the rose, I want you to think about, you could do the same thing where you could write in the background on your vacation. And you could write about things in there and you could do a background using the colors that you're inspired by while you're on vacation. And then your focal point could be something that you're inspired by while you're on vacation. Yeah, ocean things, definitely. Yeah, I see um, Sharon says sand dollars. Yeah, that I mean, sand dollars and shells and palm trees and like all of those kinds of things, right? And this is a very simple idea of using one thing as the focal point. I mean, you could have multiple different things in your composition, right? So I'm going to scroll back up here and um, I'm not sure who this is. That said, I think it has something to do if you're watching from Art Journaling 101 because that's a private group here on my business page where I'm kind of seeing things and it's showing, it shows up that way. But once I go back to the video, I can see all of the names. I think it just has something to do here with StreamYard. And I know that somebody said that they went out if they were use, they were watching in Art Journaling 101 and they came out to my business page. I just wanted to be able to stream it into Art Journaling 101 to make it just easier to be able to see. So. I'm going to go back up here and see if I can get an idea. I saw a lot of threes. Oh, I definitely mainly say see threes. So that would be, that would be this one. That would be this one with the, the rose here. So I'm going to talk to you on this one about um, some of the different things that you can do to finish this one. And I'm going to, I'm going to flatten it just a little bit here. You know, once you start putting the, all the paint and everything on there, it starts to, um, there's a little, little flatter there. So this is the one that I'm going to work on to finish today. And one of the, um, one of the things to kind of keep in mind is about knowing when to finish, <laughs> definitely. And if you need anything else in the image to have it all come together, to have it all be unified, to have the viewer's eye lead around all of the paper. So I would love to hear your comments as far as this, how it is right now. What do you feel like this needs to have it feel finished? What do you feel like I would need to do anything else to this so that it feels finished? Jana says this is the one that she loves too. Jana, am I saying your name right? Is it Jana or Jane? I, I don't know if there's another way to be able to, to say that. Oh, I love these ideas. Tessa says a vase. Tracy says a stem some shadow, dew drops, frame it, words. 
a stem and a vase outlining in the words. Oh, Laura, thank you for putting your name there. Um, a quote. These are awesome words. And now Diana, Diana is a fellow art teacher. So she has some knowledge of, you know, a composition. So she got very specific and she said, words in the lower right. So she's kind of thinking about how to, you know, where it needs to go. I want to pull out this one that I just saw here too, because I know Marion has um, experience and knows a little bit um, more about composition and bringing things together too. And she said, splattering gold. You know, there's never anything wrong with gold or glitter, right? <laughs> I brought glitter and some gold to my paint party last night. And I had some people, I don't know that anybody used um, glitter, but I know some people use some gold. So cursive writing, a stamp text, gold, monochromatic stenciling in greens. So Renee, this is one of the tracers. And then what I did is I painted over a lot of that. So if I pull that a little closer, you can see, you know, kind of like some of the lines and things like that. So here is what, and I, I painted over like some of these and things in there. So here is what I would say about this image. A lot of the things that you were saying in the comments there are exactly what this needs. There's a lot of negative space down here around the bottom that my eye is not going to because there's nothing leading my eye there. Now, I definitely think, and Colette just mentioned about this too, more definition in the rows. And I am going to talk about how to kind of do some of those refining details. So definitely, yes. Oh, Marion brought up about an artist who, um, Gustav Klimt, and he used a lot of gold, a lot of golds and a lot of patterns. And we haven't even talked about patterns. So there's definitely, yeah, a lot that you could do with that too. Oh, Becca, now I can see. Yep, now I can see your name. There you go. Oh, Sylvia says she likes glazing with a thin layer. Yes, yes. So I don't have like all of my stuff here. So I'm just going to like show you a couple of things. But all of you are right on track with talking about that it needs something. Like I think it's very obvious where, you know, something like this one, maybe it feels more finished. But this one, definitely there's some things down here in the bottom. Now, one of the things that I want to do with this one, and I think somebody had kind of mentioned this, is I want to take in the same way that we did intentional writing in the first one, I think I want to do a little bit of writing in this one. I want to do some writing because I'm sitting down to this piece of artwork at a different time than when I wrote in the background. So I have some different options and I will give you some ideas for the background. I think that I want to do something that is subtle that won't show up a lot, but I'll be able to see it. So one of the, the background is mainly the green, right? So I have the option of either doing a blue or a green and what what you can do is have a similar background. So if I had a piece of paper that had, um, I don't know that I have like another green one. Oh, I'll show you another paper here. If I had another piece of paper that was painted, I could try out some things. You know, if this one was one that I really wanted to finish, I could try out on another piece of paper. But what I want to do is have some writing in the background that's subtle. So I have two different options that I'm thinking about using here. One would be to use a colored pencil. And I like a Prismacolor color pencil. The other would be to use a, this is one of the gel or a sparkly gel pens from the Dollar Tree. And I know because I've tried to write with these sparkly gel pens over top of paint that was not completely dry, 
Tell me if you've ever done that. You've tried to hurry things and you've tried to use a Sharpie marker. You've tried to use some kind of pen like this when your paint was not dry enough. And what happens is it gets all gummy and it, especially the Sharpie marker, you just, yeah, that you can just pretty much throw that Sharpie marker away because you're not going to get it back. But this paint is completely dry. And so what I want to do, I think I'm going to use the gel. And um, Sylvia says that she definitely has. But I think that you could use a color pencil and that would be really fun. Um, you could even use, I showed the, the Distress inks. You could use a Distress crayon. So that one doesn't have a very good point on it. So I don't know that I would want to use that one. There are some other things that would have more of a point but I'm gonna use this gel pen and I'm just gonna do some writing because here's the thing when you are creating for finishing your artwork, you want to have it unified. And if somebody wants to type that in the comments there, that is a really important principle of art is unity, having things be unified. And what that means is you want it to all be cohesive. I think that that's a, maybe a word that more of us, you know, kind of are more familiar with. But having it be unified. So I'm going to take this gel pen to start to help all of that be unified because it's going to add that other layer that's going to go through all of it. So I'm going to kind of write in like some of the green spaces and it'll go a little bit into some of this blue in here. And I'm again, just gonna kind of write some of like my intention. You know, I just saw um, a video where they talked about like free writing, just like made up writing. And that was a way to just loosen up. Oh, I think my blue pen is almost out of ink, so I better get another one. I've never realized that when I'm trying to write, I really can't speak while I'm on the video. <laughs> it's really difficult. Okay. Can you see, I'm going to lift it up so you can see it better. Can you see how just writing that blue that is very similar to this blue that's back here starts to unify it? It starts to bring it all together and it adds another layer. So it's interest in there with that writing. So I want you to start looking at your artwork so that you think about it coming all together. Now, I do still feel like there's negative space in here, but that layer of writing helps to start to unify it because anytime that you can repeat a color, repetition, if you want to write that in the comments there, is another principle of art. So we've talked about being uni unified or unity. That's one principle. 
Repetition is another one. Yeah, Tessa, the idea is not necessarily to read the writing, is to have that other layer. And a lot of it is more the writing for me. And what I wrote about is my intention for having the artwork all come together, having it be unified and very harmonious. So harmony is another um, principle of art, you know, having. So by repeating this blue, in here that helped to start to unify it. Diana, I think that, oh, it's R E P E it is for repetition. So yes, Becca, you could stamp. Yes. There are a lot of people. I, and I think that I have a, a, a lettering stamp. Um, so yeah, you could, you could write, you could stamp in there something that's bringing in this blue because the, blue was just kind of all by itself. There was no place else that it was repeated, right? This green I had repeated in the background and in the leaves, right? And then I want the focal point to be the rose. So I really don't want to use that pink very much in other places. I could put it maybe in a few little places, but do you see how it starts to unify it because that blue is repeated? So that was one of the things that I wanted to show you about, if, especially if you want to do words that, yeah, like Marion said, they're kind of cryptic. It's kind of like, I don't, I don't know what it says, but I know there's some things there. And, you know, so I have, I was going to show you a, one of these little alphabet stamp kits, and you can do things like that too, and stamp, you know, just random letters like that too. And that would be, I think that would be kind of fun. I use those sometimes, but it's, it's kind of hard to close sometimes. There we go. But I, I just wanted you to see what it looked like beforehand and then see what it looked like, you know, after I did that blue writing in there. So, oh, good, Becca. I love when, um, when you pick up tips, right? And you pick up tips that will help you to create better artwork because Here's the thing, I, you know, you're not going to have me sitting beside you when you're creating, but picking up these little tips that you could use to help you in other pieces of artwork will make you a better artist, right? Yes, exactly. So it, it's repetition and you're taking away some of that negative space because it's starting to bring it all together. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Diana says she's taking notes. <laughs> so yes, good, Jana. That's, that's exactly what I wanted to. Now, could this be finished like this? It could be. I still feel like there needs to be a little bit more down in here where my eye is carried down into there. And what I like to to do is to lead my eye in different ways. And so one of the ways that I could do, and I think somebody had mentioned, is to do a stem. That would be really easy to do that, except that I did not bring my paints and everything over here. So let me see what I have. I have a green colored pencil, and I probably have a yellow, and I have, I have some things that might work here. So I have some colored pencils, I have a gel stick, and I have a distressed crayon. And here is what I would want to do. I would want to make the stem of the rose carry my eye in a curve kind of down into here. So I'm looking at the paper as I'm creating to see how would my eye follow and lead around the, the paper. And so I feel like kind of having a curve of a stem right here would be more interesting and lead my eye around than it would just to have a stem straight down. And that's just up to me. That's, that's what I've decided to lead my eye. Now, if I did have one that came straight down, I might need to have something else to be able to bring it all together. 
which that's that's the very last thing that we're going to talk about. Yeah, Becca says another layer. Yes. So, oh, hey there, Yvonne. Very good. So, oh, Tessa said this is the first time. I have all of the videos here, and they are also in Art Journaling 101 and featured. So they're probably easier to find in there if you're not in the Art Journaling 101 to get over into there. So I'm going to take the Distress Crayon and draw. I know you can't see that that lettering there, but it's sparkly. It's so much fun. <laughs> I love the sparkly. Oh, I like this green. And it kind of adds a little bit of texture in there too. And I like where it's darker. Over the blue there. So do you see how that darker green now, it's a contrast from this now is lighter green compared to this, right? We, we really didn't know what you know, whether that green was light or dark because there was nothing to compare it to, but now it's lighter than this darker green that I had in here. And then I think I'm going to take a little bit of this springy green and just kind of see. Yeah, I kind of like some of the variation in that and it starts to um, just get that a little bit more dimension in there. And so I just put like a little bit of that lighter kind of springy green in there. So, and yeah, Tessa says, are you going to put thorns? Need to put some thorns. So yes, I would need to put the thorns probably in a more detailed, um, something that I had a little bit more control with. The gel sticks or these distressed crayons have a thicker point. So I am going to use a colored pencil. And I was looking to see which ones I have here. This one might work pretty well. This one is a, I think it's a watercolor pencil, but it's a really nice point. It's kind of like in this reddish brown kind of a color. So yeah, I could definitely do some little thorns on there. And since my my paint is all dry. And just those little thorns on there really add some nice detail. And thorns are, you know, all over the stem. So you wouldn't want to just put them on the edges. You know, I'm putting a couple like in the middle. You know, so they're kind of coming from all different, different directions in there. And that starts to help your stem look more three-dimensional. Feel free to ask any questions about finishing. I know um, somebody else had mentioned, you know, this is where I always get stuck. <laughs> so if there's anything else, so there are the little thorns. So just that little detail and having something that's very fine like that helps to kind of repeat the little thin lines of the words in there. And then somebody had mentioned about kind of refining the rose a little bit. And, oh, Marion, I'm going to give you the next little envelope because she said that it reminds her of the rose and the beauty and the beast. So, Marion, I'm going to send you a little, a little um, happy meal. So, your name's going on the next little envelope there. So, I like that little rose from the Beauty and the Beast. So, tell, um, tell Marion congratulations for winning some happy mail there. So, I'm going to take this red color pencil. So, here's the thing when you're finishing. You want to use some more detailed right? This is the refining. This is the finishing. So I'm unifying, repeating things, and I'm adding details. I'm adding little details to really help to refine things. So in the rose, 
there's a lot of areas where the white, because that's, I was smoothing it with my fingers, that I want to go and just kind of add more contrast in there. So I'm going to go back in and I can really blend with this color pencil. And Prismacolor colored pencils go over top of paint that's dry really well. And you can really get some deep, deep values with the Prismacolor. Now with other color pencils, you might not be able to get that kind of depth of value, but with the Prismacolors, you really can. So I would just have a few places where I have some darker red. And in video two, we talked about making things look farther away they would be darker and then closer, they would be lighter to you. So I'm kind of finding some places where I would want, want it to be darker because it's the petals are rounded. On Tuesday, I had an example of one of my roses I had gotten from my knockout rose tree bush outside. And I really want this inner part here to be darker. I like spirals, so I'm going to kind of make that into kind of a spiral kind of shape there. So can you see how starting to add some of that darker red really pops that, that, um, that rose forward there? So I'll do a little bit more of that. And it starts to really build up some depth, right? Because I have the paint that I did underneath. I have the white that I did. Now I have this color pencil and it's starting to pick up some of that textures. And that would finish up the rose in there. And that makes a really nice contrast with the greens in there. Having this bright, deep red and then having the greens. So... The last finishing thing, especially with art journaling, I'm going to take a drink here. What is the last thing that you might think of when you're doing art journaling, especially that you might add to this? I think some people had mentioned up above. What's one of the last things that, that you would do I think that you could have this finished just as it is. You know, I'll add some more details into the flower there and up into the rose and just to find that. But I feel like these leaves, there's enough detail. The thorns on the flower, you know, on the stem, there's some details there. I've got the blue and then it repeated in there and the green kind of repeated. What's the last thing Diana says that she would do a palette knife edge. I like the edging. Somebody had mentioned that before. What, what's one of the last things? What, what else do you feel like this would need to feel finished? Is it finished now? Would, would you consider this finished? Diana says the palette knife edge is about the only thing that she would do. And I'll show you a quick technique that you can do. Um, I don't have my paint up here, so I wouldn't do a palette knife with paint edge, but I'll show you how to replicate that. And that is one of the, the last things that I do. So what else? Is there anything else that you would do to have this finished? There are a couple of things. Um, <laughs> take off the spiral holes. <laughs> I am going to do that, Diana. So. Oh, stickles. Those are those. I don't, I don't think I have that over here, but I do have one of those. So Tessa says she thinks it looks finished. Yep. Jamie says finished. Maybe add some white gel pen. These are a couple of things that I do at the very end. And um, <laughs> I don't know who this Facebook user, just add the date. I love that. I definitely, I'm actually going to have to, I don't put the date all the time. So I'm going to remember that. So 
The stickle is um, like a little, um, it's like a pen, right? That has glitter in it. And I, I know that I have one of them. That's what I'm thinking of when I think of a stickle. So, <laughs> or I think stickle. Yeah. Um, you could also do glitter. It's, it's, but it, it's a, it's a, like a gliss, it's, um, like a shimmer. It's like a shimmer instead of glitter. So it's a, a little bit different. So. Yeah. Heather says run the stamp around the sides. Yeah. <laughs> Diana says I need that. <laughs> so here are a couple things that I do to finish. And, um, one thing I know, especially with art journaling, a lot of people think about is adding words. And I will sometimes collect and just cut out from like magazines or junk mail or um, catalogs or different things like that. And so I have this little box of some different little quotes and things like that. And just things that I've cut out sometimes, um, scripture, single words, you know, just things out of magazines. And sometimes people will put, you know, some kind of words or a quote or something like that. That definitely, if that is something that helps you to express what it is that you want to put on your page, a lot of people do that with art journaling. And I definitely think that in this area somewhere, a lot of times if you do things in threes, so sometimes I will break my quotes up into three words and I will stamp them with those stamps. I will cut them out. Sometimes I'll just do the lettering myself. They can be whatever way, but sometimes I'll do them in threes. So I might have, you know, three words and I would have them overlapped probably over this stem in some way so that it unifies it. A lot of times what I see is people will just put these random things all over their page because they like roses and they like a bird and they like a butterfly and, and they just kind of put like these random things and they're all just kind of floating. If you can start to overlap and having words like over top of the stem, it will help to ground the things that you already have on there. It'll create more depth and more layering so that it all is unified, right? We can look at something and kind of know there's something maybe not as pleasing to the eye about it, but we might not know how to name it. Usually it's because it's not unified. So I love the idea of a word. I'm not going to put a word on this one right now. I do have other videos where I've done words like that and I might finish off, you know, these other three that I have with some words and I will post all of those. I was going to show you this one I did finish with a word up in this corner. So the composition really is fairly similar where I have this and the flower and the stem kind of guiding my eye through there. And then I put the words kind of in the negative space up in there, kind of with the border, the same color as I used in the rose. So I have some repetition. I sprayed the background, which is what somebody had mentioned in there. And there's not overlapping in this one because I didn't want to overlap the rose, but because I use the pink, it starts to pull those two together. Diana says the eye knows. So yeah, Tessa, you can do a lot of these same techniques on canvas or canvas board. I like the art journal because it, um, it just gives me a place to like practice. So Jana is asking about the bottom leaf and these are shiny because it's the same technique that I used on. You can probably see it on this one better on these leaves here. So this was on the beginning of day two. I showed how to use packing tape and do these leaves. I just used 
a different kind of, I don't know that this was packing tape or if this was just some other kind of plastic and I painted on um, the, the plastic or painted underneath and just put the plastic over it. And then I drew the letters or the, the veins of the leaves on top there. So that's why you're probably seeing that shiny look on there. So I really just try things and like the, the fun part for me about keeping things in an art journal and having them kind of, you know, pulled out like this is I can, I can just have fun and like play around and it, it doesn't feel like I'm, um, you know, paper's inexpensive, paint's inexpensive. So yeah, that's partly why I like doing the, the art journal and just, it gives me a place to be creative and just try out different things. So with the, um, oh good Renee, it, it was a different kind of plastic. And I think that that's just kind of why it looks different. So, yep. So here's the last couple of things. Somebody mentioned a white gel pen and I had mentioned that before that I really like the, um, Uniball Signo pen. If you don't have one of those. <laughs> Marion, I don't think that I told you. So Marion was asking about the Dollar Tree list. Now I could make a Dollar Tree list, but I did go into the local Dollar Tree right near me and I asked them if I could do a live video. And do you know what they told me? They would have to ask corporate. So it was basically a no. They're like, oh yeah, we'll ask corporate and you can come back in and, and ask and see if we found out. So that was that was what they told me. It was kind of like a no. So yes, Uni Ball Signo. I'll turn around this well. It is one of the best white gel pens that I've found. And in this one, I don't know that I would add too many places. I might do a little bit here on the leaves just to give it a little bit of highlight in there. And I could do... You know, I might just do like a little bit of the tips just to define those a little bit. This, again, is something that you have to use when your paint is all dry. Don't try to use this when it's still wet. You know, if I wanted some places here on the rows to... It's not going over this one. Oh, this pen might be almost out. I use these quite a bit. You know, if I wanted like a little bit of a highlight on some of the petals, I could do that in there too. But you can kind of see it on the, the leaves, you know, a few tips in there too. But I do love the Uniball one. I know, Jana, I don't know. It was just my local one here. That was what they said. <laughs> I don't know. Then maybe they didn't ask the people who are doing the, the videos. So the, um, oh, I need to get the gold and the silver probably. I don't have either one of those. So a metallic blue and a pink. Well, those sound good too. Like I could definitely use the metallic pink in there. I end up using the, the glitter gel pens from the Dollar Tree for those instead of um, like the Uniball ones. So the other thing that I would probably do on here, a few of you had mentioned, I would take, you know, this off here if I didn't want to put it back into the journal and um, then it would be, you know, a finished piece of artwork. But a lot of times what I do is the edging that people had talked about. And I have a little drawer over here of stamp pads. So I have like some of these little, I think I got these at Tuesday mornings, something, but they were just like a little set of stamp pads and you can take, I don't know that I want to use black, but you can take and just rub the stamp pad on the edges and it just creates kind of a border. You could do it with a palette knife. You could do it with, I've even taken 
these distress pens and this might be a better, you know, and I could color on the side there a little bit. And it just starts to give kind of a border. One of the things about the distress crayons is they are activated and they blend really easily. So it's kind of subtle there on the camera, but you can do kind of a border. And I've done it with these before. I've done it, I've done it with markers before. That's a little bit harder to control, but you could use these gel stick um, pens to do something like that too. But that would probably be one of the other things that I could um, try to just kind of finish. And it would, it would just frame everything. So then even if you put it inside of a frame, it would still have kind of like that border. And that is one of the things that will finish off the edges and just have it, you know, feel like it all goes together. So I am going to do a couple more things just to finish off this one. But I wanted to give one more envelope and then tell you what your challenge is for Monday. When I go live at 1030 a.m., I will announce the winner and I will tell you about something fun coming up next week that I did not get a chance to show you today. So I'm going to show on Monday what that is. So <laughs> Becca says pens are her kryptonite. I have a lot of pens and markers and things too. So I get it. Most of my shelving that I have over here has, you know, the little, the little cups and they're all full. They're all full of pens and markers and distress crayons. And I didn't even talk about mermaid markers and, all kinds of things. So I have all kinds of ones that are just metallics. So, oh, I, I love the thorns too. I'm glad that um, whoever said the thorns. So very good. So here's what I want you to do. And I'm going to pick somebody who puts this in the comments. I would like for you to write your biggest takeaway and it can be from day one, two, or three. What is your biggest takeaway of something that you're going to now use in your artwork? Not just something that you learned, but what is a takeaway that you had of something that you're going to actually remember and do more of or try for the very first time in your artwork? What is your biggest takeaway, something that you're going to go out, maybe even right after this video is over, that you're going to use and actually do in your artwork? Sylvia says repetition. Repetition, repetition, repeating colors will help to unify your artwork quicker than just about anything. I'll show you the mermaid markers here in a second. The background writing, she really likes that. The brushing the two colors, yes, for shading. Mary's is shopping. Contrast, yes. Oh, Susie, I hope that I get to see your rose composition. Oh, Heather says that she's guilty of those floating objects until you don't like, you don't know what you don't know. It's, it's fine. Yeah. All the different types of finishes Renee says. So I'm going to take a couple more and then I'm just going to like scroll up into those and, and find somebody to give the last, the last one to, and then I'm going to tell you about what the challenge is. Contrast shading writing for the first layer. I really like the writing and what that adds. And even if it's all completely covered up, shading, really need to work on that. Awesome. Oh, the pack, the packing tape leaves. And you can use other things besides packing tape, any kind of plastic, you know, I think actually that one that I showed to you, I used, um, markers, um, illustration markers on the plastic instead of paint. So that might be why it looked a little bit different too. So better focal points, everything to get connects together. Yeah. The finishing and shading. Okay. I got lots of comments. I, I love seeing all of those. Okay. I'm just going to scroll my mouse up and I'm just going to pick somebody for the last envelope and it goes to Heather Hensel. So Heather, I'm going to send you this last one. So I'm going to take some time over the weekend to
to make sure I have all of your addresses. I know a few of you have already sent them to me. You can private message me here or you can send an email to creationsofstudio39 at gmail.com. And yes, congratulations. So, oh, good, good, good. So um, I'm going to work on getting all the addresses and all of that. And so I'll send out all the happy mail on Monday. And I will be picking somebody from the people who posted day number two with the hashtag C-U-R day two for the challenge for day three, which I will announce on Monday when I am live. You're going to use the hashtag C-U-R day three. And I would like for you to post one completed image of a rose with the background, the focal point, all the things that we talked about today. And I would like for you to give a description, give what your takeaway, give how, like give a little bit more than just posting the photo, like actually kind of go through the process, what you liked about it, you know, just confidently post a finished page in Art Journaling 101 with the hashtag C-U-R day three. C-U-R day three. And I will pick on Monday. So you have from now until Monday at 1030 a.m. Eastern to be able to post your finished page and go in and comment on, try to comment on everybody's. Anybody who posts that hashtag C-U-R day three when you see that hashtag, you can click on it and it will show you everyone's. You don't even have to scroll the feed in Art Journaling 101. You can just click on that hashtag and you can just comment and just encourage because it takes a lot of courage for someone to post and feel like they might be criticized. Even if no one ever does, just the feeling that comes up that there might be criticism even if, you know, somebody might be thinking it like that artwork isn't good. Like, you know, couldn't they have done that better? You know, go in and encourage people, even, even just because they posted, right? That Because that's a big deal for people that they took the time to post. So even just to go in and do that and just go in and encourage people and just like love on them and just add some encouraging words and compliment some things that they did on their artwork. Let me know in the comments if you plan on posting with the hashtag C-U-R day three before Monday, because on Monday, I'm going to be picking a person. I'm going to be picking somebody who posts a Finnish page, a Finnish page with their rose on there. And I'm going to give away a $20 Amazon gift card. So the incentive is a little bit higher for to encourage you to post a finished picture to possibly get a $20 Amazon gift card. And just to finish off today, I would love to know what you would get with that $20 Amazon gift card. What would, what would you order from Amazon? Like, I know it's going to be art supplies, but like, what would you order? Would you get an Uniball Signo pen? Would you get some King Art gel sticks? Would you get some Prismacolor color pencils? Would you get some stamp pads? What is it that you would get with a $20 Amazon gift card from posting a piece of artwork? I have, I have four that I'm going to be working on finishing. So I'm going to be posting in there and Oh, this notebook, this in and out notebook. Yes. It, it is a really fun one. I don't have the example one over here. And then let me know, are you going to be watching on Monday at 1030 a.m. to know who got the $20 gift card and for me to, I'll show you all four of mine that I finished and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something that fun is coming up next week. Yeah. The in and out notebook. That's what it's called. Yeah. Very good. Well, hey, I appreciate all of you showing up for the three days of this workshop. We will finish up on Monday when I announce the winner of the Amazon gift card. I will show you all four of my finished 
ones and I'll kind of tell you some of the things that I did to finish those. It gives you time to be able to catch up on day one and day two. And just just little pro tip on day one, just skip to about minute 20. Like you don't want to watch the first 20 minutes <laughs> because it's a lot of static, a lot of echo. We were having tech issues. So, yeah. Um, oh, I saw what I, I must have missed somebody who's talking about being careful. So I, I'll have to go back and see all of those. So, oh, good. Susie says that she's going to see me on Monday on Art in the AM. Yeah, and I'm going to finish off the ones. And actually, right now, I'm going to go spend some time outside because it's beautiful. So I hope all of you have a great weekend. And thanks again for showing up here for the workshop. And hopefully I will see you again on Monday at 1030 a.m. Eastern for Art in the AM. So I'll see you then.